Et merci Marie. Thank you, thank you to all the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak about, about uh, gas hydrate. So Marie, I'm sorry, but my talk will uh, sound French. I used to say that, but this is English. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, I will speak mainly. Not you. You said in the introduction that uh, the the mini colloquy is dedicated to the coupling of techniques. Here, I will speak about uh, the main result we obtain uh, regarding the metastability, selectivity, and transport in gas hydrate by using different techniques. And uh, we will see that uh, through this uh, presentation that it is absolutely necessary to combine this technique to, to get simultaneously a result from uh, different type of techniques, as Arnaud Hilary will show, for instance, regarding uh, Raman, on, uh, Raman and neutron scattering in the following. So, uh, you want me to stay in time? So I start. I think it's better. First, by the people, because you will uh, cut my presentation at the end. So the people involved in the in the in the work that I will show are Claire Petuya, Cyril Mété, and Sophie Esper, that are PhD students. Uh, one has two has finished, and one is ongoing PhD students. Uh, collaborators in the Institut Lolangevin, so the Neutron Scattering Center at Grenoble, Jacques Olivier and Viviane Nassif, uh, le Laboratoire Léon Brilouin. Uh, with uh, Françoise Damet, and then theoretician uh, Ludovic Martin Gondre, Sylvain Picot uh, in Utinam at Besançon, Antoine Pat, a PhD, and now who is a postdoc at uh, ICB uh, lab in Dijon, and then a Spanish collaborator for uh, calculations. So, rapidly, what are these uh, clatrate hydrates? They are systems constituted of water molecules forming cages, nano. Uh, matter size, let's say, uh, cages encapsulating gas molecules. These uh, systems exist, uh, occur naturally. They have been uh, discovered uh, in early 20th century uh, in the pipelines and then in deep ocean in the 80s, let, let's say, in the uh, 20th centuries. And so there is a large uh, Reservoir on gas hydrate on hers, and this uh, gas hydrate are made mainly of methanhydrate, so they contain a huge uh, uh, quantity of uh, methane that can be used as an energy resources. But this is not the goal nowadays. But uh, the main issue regarding this uh, natural occurrence of methanhydrate concerns the geohazards and the impact on the climate on the climate that could be due to the release of this uh, methane in the uh, ocean or in the atmosphere. They also, they may also exist on other uh, planets and comets uh, in the solar system like uh, Titan or Mars, uh, but there is no experimental evidence of this existence of this occurrence, but only uh, they are involved in the models uh, um, reproducing the uh, accretion, for instance, of uh, titans. So, since uh, this uh, natural occurrence, there has been many research in this uh, field regarding, uh, for instance, uh, process engineering. Uh, so, they are forming pipelines, they will lock the pipelines, uh, they have the ability to selectively uh, encapsulate uh, different type of uh, gas molecule. So they could be used for gas separation, gas storage. Uh, they are able not to encapsulate the salts, so they could be used for desalination. Uh, they could be used due to their uh, specific thermodynamic conditions, uh, properties uh, for cooling device, and so on. So they, there are many process engineering process where they, 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 uh, they could be uh, used. As I said before, they are involved in geoscience, and there is a huge uh, community working on the geoscience part of gas hydrate, and they, they are also involved in uh, many planets and comets, so a uh, uh, few uh, people in astrophysics working on this system. All this research, applied research, uh, I would say, uh, rely on physical properties, physical chemical properties, the organization of uh, the 
the system, the dynamics, the transport properties, the chemical composition to know what what it, to know what is encapsulated within the cages, the formation mechanisms uh, on the uh, dissociation, obviously, uh, regarding, for instance, the release in the atmosphere, the problematic of transport, molecular transport is a molecule able to uh, diffuse from one cage to another one. And there are also may, plenty of issues uh, regarding the uh, interfaces between hydrate and substrate since they are formed in natural sediments, for instance, in deep ocean. In this talk, I will focus mainly on three points uh, regarding these physical chemical properties. One will be uh, uh, the metastability of this system. So we form one structure and it will change to another one. Another one will be the selectivity. So the ability of the gas hydrate to uh, capture selectively one uh, chemical species. And the third one, if I have enough time, the transport properties in this system. So, sorry, a few words about the methodology. So first, if you want to form this uh, gas hydrate, do you see my pointer? No, I don't think you see my pointer. No. We see your mouse. Yes, we see the mouse. Uh, you see the mouse, okay. So to form the, the gas hydrate, you have mainly two methods. Here, this is the phase diagram, temperature, pressure. Either you pressurize, uh, let's say, ice, and you enter the stability region of the gas hydrate or you uh, pressurize liquid water and then you cool down the system to enter the gas hydrate stability zone. To do that, you obviously need high pressure devices. And since I will speak about uh, uh, selectivity, you need to prepare mixture of gases. So you need to have a system allowing uh, to prepare uh, this uh, gas mixture. I will not go into details of on all the equipment we have at Bordeaux to form this hydrate, but we can form them into a specific optical cells, into uh, various type of autoclave, and also into uh, glass capillary, 100 uh, micrometer uh, capillaries that could be really useful for imaging uh, the gas hydrate. To study the system, so then we combine experiments and modeling. Uh, we use, obviously, neutron scattering since uh, several years, and um, uh, we combine that uh, with uh, Raman scattering to study the vibrational properties with NMR. I will not speak about NMR in this talk, but uh, mainly about Raman. And then, uh, theoretically, we can compare the uh, neutron scattering data with some molecular dynamic simulations, I mean, show or classical molecular dynamic simulations, uh, things that I will not show uh, during this talk today. If you want uh, and you don't manage to sleep over the night, you have an ice book dedicated to the Raman neutron contributions uh, to the gas hydrate science, and you can read it. Uh, it's uh, fascinating. OK, no. Uh, I go on by uh, showing you what are the main contribution of neutron and Raman scattering. This is mainly the two techniques I will focus on during this talk. So you can use uh, spectroscopy, obviously, uh, with Raman on neutron with uh, inelastic neutron scattering. You can use diffraction mainly with neutron to study the structure. Uh, I don't have a diffractogram here, but uh, to study the structure of the system to know which type of hydrate we have formed. You can use the neutron spectroscopy, quasi-elastic neutron scattering, for instance, to study the gas molecule dynamics within the cage. So with that, you can have information regarding the structural and dynamics properties, regarding the chemical composition, the gas partitioning uh, of the molecule. So which type of molecule are encapsulated in the various type of cages. Then with Imaging and mainly with Raman at this uh, stage. Uh, Raman imaging, you can look at the formation mechanisms, uh, the kinetics, the hydrate uh, distribution, especially when you are looking at the uh, distribution within sedimentary uh, matrix. In this talk, I will focus mainly on this. Uh, three points here, chemical composition for selectivity, structural properties for metastability and formation mechanisms and kinetics through Raman 
imaging. So metastability. If you want to form a nitrogen hydrate, you just need to pressurize some ice, uh, for instance, at 255K on 200 bar on weight for different uh, durations so that you will see the formation of the gas hydrate. If you wait only uh, four hours of, so you pressurize your ice for four hours, you will observe a so-called type one structure of the gas hydrate. If you wait here, this is the neutron diffraction data. If you wait 12 hours, you will see the type one, the so-called type one, and then you will see additional bright peaks that are due to uh, the so-called type two structure. So the type one structure is a cubic structure with a cell parameter of 12 Armstrong, and the type two structure is a, a cubic structure, uh, unit cell, sorry, with a, uh, 17 Armstrong cell parameters. And then if you wait one hour, one day, sorry, you will see the Bragg peak of the type two that will increase, and then the Bragg peak due to the type one that will decrease. So in fact, depending on the pressurization time, you will observe first uh, the type one, and then this type one structure will transform into uh, the type two uh, structure. So this is represented here by integrating characteristic Bragg peaks of the type one and the type two. So you see the Bragg peak of the type one that disappear to the benefit of the Bragg peak of the type two. So the type one is chemically, kinetically favored while the type two is thermodynamically a stable phase of the uh, hydrate. Uh, so for the nitrogen hydrate, you will observe this phenomenon over uh, three, four days, the, the time before you reach the thermodynamically stable phase is three and a half day, roughly. But if you use carbon monoxide, you will observe similar behavior, but over four months. So one has to be really careful when you study this uh, gas hydrate. So what is the origin of this metastability? By Raman scattering, so we can uh, distinguish the Raman signature of the nitrogen here encapsulated in one type of cage, the large cage of the type two on here uh, in blue, the Raman signature of the uh, nitrogen encapsulated into the small cage. And depending on the pressure on the temperature, so this is not shown here, uh, you will observe that there is a variation of the occupation of the large cage in this hydrate. In other words, the large cage of the type 2 hydrate can uh, catch and release quite easily guest uh, molecule. And you can observe exactly the same phenomenon with uh, the carbon monoxide. So then we make some calculation to understand the uh, stability in terms of energy of the system for the type 1 and the type 2 structure. And we calculate the uh, intermolecular energy, I will not describe it, but the lower the energy is, the stable, the more stable is the structure. So we calculate this energy for various um, occupancy, so number of gas molecules within the large cage of the type 2 stru structure, but also of the type 1 structure. And you see that if you don't fill uh, the large cage of this uh, gas hydrate, then the stable structure will be the type 1. And then when you start to fill the large cage till the full occupancy, you will always observe this type one as the most stable structure. But when you have a double occupancy, you start to put more than one molecule in the large cage, then you see that the type two becomes the most stable structure. So the, uh, this uh, transformation from type one to type two that we observe with time is probably due to uh, the fact that uh, uh, we start to fill more and more the large cage, and then we transform the uh, structure one into the structure two, that is the most stable when the large cage are filled. I will speak a little bit about uh, selectivity now. And this selectivity is not measured again by neutron scattering, but by uh, Raman scattering. So by Raman scattering, you can get the information regarding the phase of the guest molecule that you have in this hydrate. So you have here the Raman uh, signature, for instance, for CO2 
in the gas phase. And when it is encapsulated, you will have you will have a signature that is observed at lower frequency that is due to the confinement of the CO2 within the water cage. This is the same for uh, the carbon monoxide and here for uh, the nitrogen. In addition, before this is what I showed you, you can have the signature of the large cage and the small cage and the same for nitrogen if you make a precise analysis of the Raman profile. You can do the same uh, with neutron inelastic scattering if you if you wish. Uh, then to when you prepare gas nitrate with uh, a gas mixture, so you combine CO2 on CO, for instance, or CO on N2, you will obtain what we call a mixed hydrate. So an hydrate co-encapsulating co two types of species. By analyzing the Raman intensity in the gas phase on in the hydrate phase, we are able to uh, extract a figure of merit that we call the selectivity, so the capacity of the gas hydrate to selectively encapsulate one type of gas molecule. This is what is shown here for various type of uh, gas mixture, CO2N2, CO2CO, and CON2 here. And I will start first with the CO2 gas mixture. You have here the uh, equilibrium, equilibrium curves of the pure hydrate, CO2, you see that is stable at higher uh, temperature and lower pressure than CO on N2. So if you prepare a gas mixture of CO2, CO on CO2, N2 at a pressure that is 25 bars on a temperature that is 270K, you will be close to the equilibrium curve of the CO2 hydrate so that you will become selective into CO2 on the figure of merit here will be greater than one that is the signature of the CO2 uh, preferred encapsulation within the hydrate. So if you have a gas mixture based on CO2 with nitrogen and with carbon monoxide and you mix some water with it, you will be able to uh, retrieve the, only the CO2 somehow. If you do that with CO on N2, you see that the equilibrium curve are really close. So here, the thermodynamic condition will not be the uh, factor that will uh, uh, drive uh, the selectivity. So if you make the experiment at 200 bar, you will see that uh, this figure of merit, beta, is greater than 1, which means in this case that uh, the hydrate is selective in carbon monoxide. So uh, the, the gas hydrate is able to uh, selectively uh, capture the carbon monoxide. And to understand the origin of that, the origin of this uh, uh, preferential encapsulation of the carbon monoxide, we make some calculation with the colleagues from uh, Dijon. Um, we use Monte, they use Monte Carlo uh, Grand Canonic, uh, sorry. Grand canonical uh, Monte Carlo simulations to simulate the system and they calculate the selectivity for the two types of structure that we may meet for the CO N2 uh, hydrate. So here you have the theoretical selectivity for the structure two and here the selectivity for the structure one on the green point are the Raman measurement that I showed you before. And we see that whatever is the structure we are always CO selective, which is in agreement with the experiments. And in addition, uh, you see that the structure two will be more selective than the structure one. And when we decrease the concentration of carbon monoxide in the gas mixture, we see that the selectivity increases experimentally. This is what has been observed experimentally here. At low CO concentration, the selectivity increase. And this would be due uh, to the fact that we have a change of structure. We go from structure one to structure two when we have a really low concentration of uh, carbon monoxide. And this has been confirmed. Uh, this simulation, this calculation has been confirmed by recent uh, neutron diffraction experiment that we have performed that uh, I have not shown here. How long do I have, uh, Marie, uh, roughly? Uh, five more minutes. Five more minutes? Okay, yeah. perfect. 
So I will finish uh, this presentation by saying a few words about the molecular transport in this gas hydrate system. And I will speak about the uh, nitrogen, the, sorry, the hydrogen uh, uh, case. So in this hydrate, it is possible to uh, encapsulate hydrogen molecules, molecular hydrogen. But to do so, you need to pressurize water with a quite high pressure, something like a thousand bar. And then you will be able to put in this uh, uh, water cages some hydrogen. The uh, storage capacity will be quite low, but uh, this is quite interesting because this is this uh, storing material is only made of water. The huge inconvenient, the huge uh, problem is the high pressure that needs to be used because uh, if you just pressurize hydrogen into a tank, uh, you will be able to have a better storage capacity and you will have no water. So uh, no need to use pure uh, water with hydrogen to store hydrogen. But if you co-include into this hydrate some um, promoter, uh, gas hydrate promoter here, this is a THF, the tetrahydrofuran, then you can decrease the pressure to uh, something like 100 bar so that uh, you decrease the storage capacity, but the, uh, you soften the pressure condition uh, to form the, 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 the hydrogen storing material somehow. So we have studied this system uh, that co-encapsulate THF on H2 by using quasi-elastic neutron scattering. And first, it was to observe if the hydrogen remain encapsulated into the uh, cages and this is the cage with the case the case the case sorry uh, we study the quasi elastic neutron scattering and we just observe a quasi elastic uh, contribution that is due to uh, Brownian motion of the hydrogen within the cage no inter cage diffusion by simulations we have been able to observe the inter cage diffusion but uh, to observe that you need to go at pressure higher that than 100 bar or even uh, thousand bar. The, the other drawbacks of this system is the formation kinetics that is really long to be formed. If you want to form this THF uh, H2 hydrate with a, a high hydrogen content, you need to um, wait, let's say, several days before you, you can reach the limit of hydrogen that you can put in this hydrate. And this is probably due to the fact that the cage, the water cage is quite rigid the water molecule reorientation within this hydrate is something like a microsecond. And there is a way to soften somehow these uh, cages by including uh, strong acids in this system. This is what we have shown several years ago so that uh, the molecular dynamics here uh, shows that the uh, water molecules are far more flexible and then uh, the water molecules can reorient with a time scale that is really faster, nanosecond on or picosecond. So then we have shown that it is possible to co-include, so to make this hydrate with THF and uh, strong acids, HClO4, the perchloric acids, with a really low quantity of uh, the strong acid within this hydrate. And then in this case, by using Raman scattering, but we could have used neutron inelastic uh, scattering also to show that. We have shown that the uh, cage breathing mode somehow is softened with this uh, strong acid. So then by Raman scattering, Raman imaging, we have been able to show that it is possible to follow the insertion of uh, the hydrogen within this hydrate. And here, this is what I'm trying to show. That is here the system. So we have the cell, we have the uh, mix hydrate, THF uh, hydrate or THF H04 hydrate. And then we expose this hydrate to a uh, gas pressure, H2 ga gas pressure uh, up to 200 bar. And then by making Raman imaging on a plan that is perpendicular to the interface between the hydrate, sorry, the hydrate and the gas phase, and this is here, the Raman image, we are able to follow, this is here, the interface between the gas at the upper side of the figure on the hydrate at the lower phase. 
lower uh, side of the figure, we are able to follow the insertion of the hydrogen within the hydrate. And you see here the time scale, this is 14, eight hours. Uh, so then we are able to measure the uh, H2 diffusion front as a function of time. This is what is shown here, the square of this diffusion front, and to measure it with pure THF hydrate and THF um, acid hydrate. And we are, have been able to show that uh, by adding some strong acid, you can increase, improve the hydrogen insertion within uh, this hydrate, so decrease the uh, the time required to form this hydrate. And if you look at the literature on the data regarding the intercage diffusion somehow of the hydrogen within the THF hydrate, you will notice also that here, this is the experiment we have done with neutron scattering, zero pressure on the, the, the temperature was about 270K, the previous data I showed you. Here, this is some NMR data from the uh, literature on here, this is the point that we obtain with Raman scattering and you see that there is like an optimum pressure uh, for the insertion of hydrogen. There is no need to go to really high pressure. You can stay at 50, 60 bar phenomenon that we, I think we do not fully understand at the moment. So I will conclude. Quickly. Because I think it is time. Yes, it's time. Uh, so uh, gas hydrate, this is really a simple uh, system made of water with complex and rich phenomenon that could be observed. I showed you some of them. We are working uh, at the moment on project regarding uh, natural environment of gas hydrate that I did not show, but uh, the, the, the reproduction of natural environment in terms of uh, sediments, so clays, silicate and so on and so on on looking at the formation of this hydrate uh, within this natural environment this natural environment includes also the cometary conditions we don't go to any comets we just reproduce the cometary conditions in labs and i would like to say a few words before uh, the talk of uh, arno hilary just after so several years ago uh, i Okay, we, we are working on neutron scattering since a long time. And um, this is a really nice tool and a unique tool that is absolutely necessary for gas hydrate science. No doubt about that. And as Marie said at the beginning of uh, at the introduction of this mini colloque, uh, one strength of the neutron scattering is to be combined with other techniques, and, uh, especially with Raman. So several years ago, we I propose to uh, LLB to develop a spectrometer that combines Raman and Neutron. And this has been done uh, in collaboration with uh, Arnaud Hilary, Christian Alba Simonesco, and people from the Institut des Sciences Moléculaires. And we managed to obtain this uh, uh, stick, this orange stick that allowed to perform Raman and Neutrons. And we use it the last week of Saclay, of Orphe, sorry, which was. Uh, Okay, uh, I hope we will be able to use it at uh, Grenoble. A few words about uh, the GDR hydrate. Uh, GDR, GDR hydrate, uh, if you wish, there is uh, an école thématique. Uh, this is full, I think uh, there is already uh, uh, plenty of people, but the journée plénière uh, in anglais, uh, 21, 22nd of October, and you are, feel free to come. The registration is free, there will be a mixture. Uh, uh, Zoom and presential in Anglet, uh, face to face meeting, uh, which is uh, necessary. And um, I thank you for your attention and ready for a few questions. <laughs>